In previous videos, we've talked about the importance of attaching sources to our ancestors' personal detail page because they provide evidence of our ancestors' life, their birth and death information, and their family relationships. And so today we're going to be talking about how do we take these record hints that we find over here on the right-hand side of their personal detail page, look at them, and decide whether they belong with them or not, and if they do, how to attach them. So the first thing I do is I look over my ancestors' personal detail information, their name, their birth, their death, and then I scroll down and start looking at their family information just so I get a better understanding of their life and their family members. And then I'll come down here and I'll actually look at all their sources. If you click on them, you can actually just get an index portion of the sources that sit here, or you can also go right into the actual image itself too. And so after doing that, it gives me a much better idea of whether this record hint truly does belong with my ancestor or not. So we're going to go in and look at, if I click on the name of my ancestor, it will bring up that indexed portion of that census record. And so I can just take a quick glance over this and even scroll down and I can see the family members that are on this census record too. And if you look at this, you can see her husband George is the same one that sits over here, or at least it appears to be so far. And her son is a Robert, and here we have a Robert, and then we have a Charles and a Charles. But then we have this Maggie Gilkey down here at the bottom that says is the niece. And as I looked at the family members, I thought, okay, let's just go check this out real quick. I looked at the sisters because, of course, when they get married, they usually take on their husband's name. And as I looked into Carolyn Dyer, it showed that she had a daughter with the name of Maggie Gilkey. And so after looking at that census record and the life of Carolyn Dyer with her husband, it gave me enough evidence to show that I really do believe that this record hint does belong with my ancestor. So when I click on this, once again, I can scroll down to the bottom and I can either click on review attachments or view image. Usually I will just automatically click on review attachment, which brings me to this area right here. And this is just a shorter indexed portion of what's sitting here on the census. You can see up here it says United States Census is on the left and my ancestor is sitting here on the right. But before I go attach this, I will always go look at the image. That is really important to do because there's always more information or I should say usually more information on the actual document itself. So when I click on that, it brings me into this actual 1980 census and I can see here George Higginbotham along with his wife, his children, and his niece. And so my goal now is to go over the census record and really read each one of these lines in here and what they have to teach me about my ancestor. So you can look at the very top of a census record. Let me go up here. And you can actually see what every one of these columns is referring to when you're looking at them. So it gives a lot more information than what I'll be talking about today. But some of my main stuff that I'll be looking at today, just to get a quick glimpse of this, is I will go over the birth years of each person and check to see if it is the same as what I show on Sarah's personal detail page over here. I will also look at the occupations that they have and of course, where they were born, where their parents were born. But like I said, don't skip these other spaces because they really are important and they'll teach you a lot about your ancestors and their lives. So after studying this uh, 1880 census, I really do believe that this is giving me enough evidence to show that this is talking about my ancestor. And so I'm ready to go attach this source. So after clicking attach source, it brings me to the source linker page. And as I look at this, I can see the U.S. 1880 census on the left, and I see that my ancestor is on the right-hand side. And it's just giving me a very short version of the index portion that's showing here on the census record. And as I scroll down here, you can actually see that every person that was mentioned in the family of Sarah and George Higginbotham is listed on the left. And then on the right, I can see Sarah with her husband and all of her children that I was showing on her personal detail page. So a few things to be aware of on this page is that when I go to attach this source to Sarah, it's going to tag some events for me, and which is providing evidence of spe some specific things, such as this 1980 census is providing evidence of her name, her birth year, 
and that she's a female. And so I love the fact that it does that for me without me having to do anything. Uh, let's scroll down here under George Higginbotham. I can tell that this source is already attached to him because it says detach, which allows me the ability to detach this from him if it got attached to the wrong person. I can also with this little carrot to the left click on this and I could switch spouses right here if she had any other spouses and attach that census record to a different spouse if that needed to happen. You can see that next to her husband and her children it says details and if you click on that it opens up information if you need to see that on each one of these children or you can close it all too. You can also see that it says siblings from family tree and then it has open. If I click on that, I can literally see the siblings. And if one of those siblings was listed down here, I could left click and drag and drop that person right there so I could then attach it to the correct sibling. So whenever I have the ability to see a hand, it allows me to left click and drag up and drop wherever I need that person to go. All right, we're ready to attach this source. So anytime I'm ready to attach a source, I need to write a reason statement of why I'm doing that. And for this, it's providing evidence of family relationships, birth years, birthplaces, occupations, and residents. It also provides evidence that Margaret E. Gilkey, or Maggie that we saw her by on that census record, is living with George and Sarah Higginbotham and is their niece. So after I get that written in there, I'll click Attach. And you can see it switched it from Compare to Detach. And then I can come down here and I can also attach it to her son by clicking Compare. I'll scroll down a little bit and you can see that by default it put in my reason statement for me so I don't need to write that again. Click attach and I've got that done. Now we don't want to forget to attach this to Maggie. She is the niece and she is on that census record. So the way we do that is we're going to go up to change and we're going to click on Maggie and we're going to put her as our top focus person. Which means now I got to switch Sarah Dyer over here. So if I go to change you can see she's not listed over here because I only see parents, spouse, children, and siblings, and that's not what she is. So I literally have to go grab her ID number. So I have her home page, her detail page opened up right here, and I'm going to copy it down, go back to this source linker page, and paste it in here, and then I will say go find her. And you can see that it's going to pull her up with the word compare. So I will click on that. You can see I have the right person, and then it already put in that reason statement for me, which I love, and then I'll click Attach. So that way I've got this census record now attached to every family member that I saw listed on that original document. I'm going to jump back to Sarah Dyer's detail page just for one last minute here to talk about where these record hints come from. As I enter in an ancestor into Family Tree, it creates a personal detail page for my ancestors. And as it's looking at the name, the birth, the death, and family information, the computer by default will go out and try to find sources that pertain to my ancestors. But we have to understand that's why they're called record hints, because they're not saying that these are 100% yes, this is your ancestor. It's my job to gather up enough information to make a clear judgment on whether it really does pertain to my ancestor or not. If it does, great, go and attach it. And if it doesn't belong with your ancestor, you'll click on a little area that says not a match. I hope this was really helpful. Thanks for joining me.